to the audio ear training distortion and noise tutorial. So as an audio engineer, your number one priority is recording clean audio. What that means is free from noise and distortion. So you're going to need to train your ear to hear these problems and you're going to need to train your brain to know what causes these problems. So in this exercise, we are going to have you create clean, distorted, and noisy versions of the same audio passage. So don't be surprised if at first you have trouble hearing the difference. Critical listening is likely not something you've had to do very much if you are new to working with audio. But once you have trained your ears, I promise you that you will never hear recordings the same way again. And to the well-trained audio engineer, things like distortion and noise scream to them that something is wrong and needs to be fixed. So at this point, I will assume that you have watched the lab login and file setup training video. If you have not done so yet, please do. So we will first create a new project folder by opening the class edit share network storage drive and control clicking to create a new project folder with the last name, your last name, and then dash audio ear training. One. All right, great. So now that we have a new folder for our project, we will launch Pro Tools. And again, we will go to the Create tab once Pro Tools launches. Create tab is open, and we will again create last name. And this is now our Pro Tools project audio ear training dash PT for Pro Tools. We are going to keep the settings uh, of wave for file type, sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit depth last use IO settings for location. As we always do, we are going to confirm that we are on our class drive and we are going to make sure that we are in the new folder we just created. So in this case, audio ear training one, I'm going to say open. Great. We are now pointed in the right direction and we are going to click create and Pro Tools launches. Now we are going to go to the track menu and choose new, or we can hit shift command N and that brings up the new track dialog box and we are going to configure for one new mono audio track and we will click create. So this creates a new track named audio one. We are going to double click where the name appears and we are going to name that with your first name dash ear VO. So whatever audio files get recorded, they're going to be slated with this name. So it's very important that before you ever record, you name your tracks something relevant to what it is that you're recording. Otherwise, you're going to end up with 10,000 files that are named audio one throughout your project folders. And if you need to go back and find things later, that's going to be a real pain. So get into the practice of naming before you ever arm a track for a record and click OK. Very good. On the track input selection, we are going to select the interface and we are going to choose whether or not we want input one or two, depending on which microphone we want to use. Most of the labs have two microphones available to you. Um, if you are not sure which mic is which, we can do a quick scratch test to find out. So we would turn up the gain on one side, uh, one channel of the tabletop mic pre, and then we can just go to, uh, turn that up to, you know, about one o'clock, two o'clock, and then just scratch one of the microphones. And you should see you know, that one of the channels glows um, with uh, a bit of green to let you know which side you're on. 
Now, we would aspire to keep the left mic into channel 1 and the right mic into channel 2, but sometimes students switch things around. So, a good audio engineer would never assume that things are set up any given way. A good audio engineer will confirm that things are what they think they should be before moving forward. Okay, uh, something else to watch for if you do not see any um, indication when you're doing the scratch test. These are condenser microphones, meaning that they require phantom power. So the uh, red phantom power 48 volt um, light needs to be active. Make sure that you are supplying power to the microphones as well. So if you have power and you have the gain up, you should see some type of level if the interface is running properly. If it is not, then that is likely um, maybe something didn't boot properly with the computer. So in this case, if that occurs, you should shut down the computer, just verify that the USB connection is made in back of the interface, in back of the computer, and then start up again. Sometimes it's just simply a matter of rebooting the computer, letting it kind of reacquire that hardware, and then go through that process again. Once you are sure that you are speaking into the correct microphone, uh, make the proper selection within your input. So in my particular case here, I'm going to speak into the right microphone. So I'm going to choose input two for my Pro Tools track. These microphones are also directional. So you want to confirm that you are speaking into the correct side of the microphone. It is possible for the mic to get turned around, although kind of difficult, um, but you could speak into the wrong side of the microphone. So the correct side of the microphone where it is expecting to, where, where its ear is facing, is the side with the AKG logo. Uh, it's also got the dip switches for uh, the roll off and the attenuation. So if you see the switches and the AKG logo, you're speaking into the correct side of the microphone. If you speak into the other side, it's going to make your audio seem more roomy and that's actually going to make a critical listening exercise like this a little bit more difficult. Um, so make sure you speak into the right side of the mic. Um, on the interface, you want to make sure that the direct monitor switch is off. Um, when it is on, audio from the mic will always pass through to the speakers. So I'm going to turn this on for a minute. And this can cause more audio to feed back into the room. Uh, this is going to also make your recordings seem more roomy because your voice is kind of in there bouncing around the room a lot more. And at worst, it's going to cause feedback, okay, which we do not want, obviously. All right, so in general, under most every circumstance for this class, uh, you're going to keep direct monitoring off. Okay, great. Uh, we will make sure that the big monitor knob is all the way down and then we will record enable our track. So now as I speak into the microphone, I should see my meter within Pro Tools bouncing in accordance with uh, my recording, uh, my speaking, right? Um, so during recording, all monitoring should be done via the headphones, uh, adjusting the level with the smaller headphone level adjustment uh, to the right side of the, the big monitor knob. Since we want to distort this first recording, uh, our, our gain level setting is going to be easy. Uh, we're just going to take that gain knob that we've identified as relevant to the microphone we're speaking into, and we are going to turn it up all the way. Okay, so now we are going to uh, click the, the channel arm button if we have not done so already. We see our audio moving. We should probably see that the clip light is uh, starting to go on on the channel indicator. We should see a little red clip light up at the top. Then we are going to uh, confirm that no sound is coming out of the monitor speakers in the room. Yes, I'm listening. Okay, good. Doesn't sound like it was before. That's good. Then we are going to click arm on the transport arm button and when we're ready we are going to click the transport play button we should be positioned about three or four inches from the microphone we should have the pop screen in between our mouth and the microphone and then we are going to click play 
and we are going to read the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. This is what overdriven distortion sounds like. All right, so I will click play. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. This is what overdriven distortion sounds like. And then we click stop on the transport or hit the space bar. Next, we're going to record um, noisy audio. Uh, so we're going to do a bit of an exercise to kind of trick our way around this to kind of um, approximate noise, make a, a clip that would be noisier than it would otherwise be. Um, so there's kind of two steps to how we're going to do this one. So first, uh, click in the timeline, the Pro Tools timeline of your audio track, after the region that shows your distorted audio, just anywhere after that, because we just don't want to record over what we just did. Um, but we're going to create another audio region after that. This is going to be our noisy example. All right, with the cursor there, with just a little gap, it's arbitrary, whatever, uh, whatever the gap that wants to be, uh, we are going to arm our track, if not already still armed, and we are going to press the record arm on the transport window. Now we're going to take our gain knob, and we're going to turn that down to about nine o'clock. So as I speak into the microphone, you should see that your audio meter on your VU meter for Pro Tools is now hovering way down at the at the bottom, you know, the bottom 5% of the track or so. Uh, looking at the channel in the mixer window, I can see that that's down, it's hovering just above 50 dB, somewhere between negative 50 and negative 40 decibels. All right, so now we're going to record at that level. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. This is what noisy audio sounds like. I'm going to let it run for just a second after I sp finish speaking so that you have a little bit of a gap so it's not just all you're talking. Leave yourself a little bit of a, a margin in there where you can hear what the room sounds like when you can hear what the mic pre-noise sounds like. All right, now for this, you're going to click once on that region to highlight it. And then you're going to go up and we're going to process this audio to kind of make up the gain that we took away synthetically. So we're going to use the audio suite menu. We're going to go down to other. We're going to choose gain. And then on this menu, there's this little gain slider. You're just going to slide that over until you see that you are adding about 40 decibels of gain. That's about 10%, it says. Let's see. Uh, actually. So about, about 40 decibels of gain. And that's uh, the equivalent to about, um, what is it, 10,000%. <laughs> All right. So, and then you're going to render that. And so you should see an audio waveform. And when you listen to that, so you need to be a little bit careful here. 35 decibel. You can you can uh, command Z. If you notice that you're clipping your waveforms, that your waveforms are getting all the way to the top of your region. Um, you're actually distorting it, um, which is we don't want to do because uh, that'll confuse us between being able to hear distortion or being able to hear noise. You just want to turn it up. So you might have to experiment with this a little bit. So between 35, 40 decibels, 30, somewhere in that range of 30 to 40 decibels of gain um, should get you in there. So what you want to try to do is get to the point that you can hear noise, but that it doesn't have that distorted fuzz that our first sample had. So that's what we're kind of trying to shoot for as an academic exercise. All right, and then finally, after that, we're going to click in the region uh, and the playlist window again, just with a little bit of a gap after the noisy audio file. And now we're going to turn up our gain meter. And while I'm turning up my gain meter, I wanna watch my mixer window in Pro Tools. 
And what I want to try to get is for my audio to hover somewhere around that negative 20 part in Pro Tools, where our meter moves from dark green to light green. So I want my average, there's a reason that they're drawing your attention to that area. That's kind of the sweet spot for good audio recording. So if you get yourself right in that sweet spot where you hover, obviously you're going to bounce around a little bit as you're speaking, but you want to get so you hover somewhere around that negative 20 break in your average speaking, and then you're going to, again, click the transport record arm and then the transport play and say, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. This is what good recorded audio sounds like, hopefully. All right. And then you'll be able to listen back to that. And again, leave yourself a little gap after that plays. Um, so now you are left with a Pro Tools session. Click Save. And so now you should be left with a Pro Tools session with your last name, named Audio Ear Training PT. And it should have three regions in one audio file. One is distorted, one is noisy, and one is clean audio. And then just listen to these and try to start to familiarize yourself with what it is to be distorted audio. Um, what is it that makes something noisy? How did I create a noisy file? What was I doing? I had bad gain structure. I wasn't bringing enough signal in. I had to boost it synthetically. And then that gave rise to this noise that I have. It's just not clean. There's just something in there that's competing with the voice which is what I wanted. Uh, and then listen to what clean audio sounds like. Hear how it's kind of like in between the words, it's relatively silent. The words themselves, I can hear the articulation of them. I don't feel like it's being processed in any way. It doesn't have a crunch to it, like a, like a crunchy guitar or like a telephone sound to it. It sounds generally what I would call natural. Uh, so that's what we're going for as an audio engineer. We want clean audio that sounds natural once we have that then we can play with it and do different stuff and you know color it or make it fit different things but once it's messed up in the recording process it's kind of messed up all the way through the chain so you really haven't done your job